we're so grateful this morning to have John, our own John Bell as our speaker, and to have Caroline Park back with us after a, a long hiatus uh, to do our special music today. And Caroline's gonna do our prayer at this time. Caroline, that was beautiful. Um, once again, welcome everyone to our, I guess call it our hour of power on Sunday morning. Today, our prayers today are, are, are from Richard Gore's The Universal Christ. So let's get ready for our center of prayer. Take a deep breath. Faith at its essential core is accepting that we are accepted. We cannot deeply know ourselves without also knowing the one who made us. And we cannot fully accept ourselves without accepting God's radical acceptance of every part of us. And God's impossible acceptance of ourselves is easier to grasp if we first recognize it in the perfect unity of the human Jesus and the divine Christ. Start with Jesus, continue with yourself, and finally, expand to everything else. And so it is. Breathe. Your holy presence. 
thank you so much. What a gorgeous introduction. Good morning, everyone. I'm speaking to you from Alabama. So you might notice that I'm outside. You might hear some bird song. You might hear some dogs barking. And the sun is very bright. Uh, but I'm glad to be here. And I'm so glad that we have Zoom where we can all connect with each other no matter where we are. I want to thank Cheryl for inviting me to deliver the message this morning. I appreciate it. It's always a joy to be able to be invited to speak about a topic and then spend time researching and thinking and pondering. It's a great way to put unity principles into action for me. I want to thank Caroline Park for being here and for giving some thought to the beautiful music that she's presenting for us today. Thank you, Caroline. Jan Smoot and Karen Gray, always looking out for us and being the medium through which we all communicate during our service. Thank you so much. The title of my talk today is After Easter, The Second Act. Last Sunday, we celebrated Easter, the resurrection of Jesus the Christ, his crucifixion and death, his resurrection. His resurrection was the culmination of his mission on earth to teach us how to love, how to live, how to serve each other, and how to keep our minds always on God. Easter represented the end of Jesus's mortal life, as well as his victory over death. But that's no, not the end of the story, by all means. Nor is it the end of the story for us, metaphysically. So what comes after Easter? for Christ's apostles and for us. Of course, when I prepare a message, I'm usually inspired by an event in my own life or something that I've been thinking about. You might be familiar with my story recently because I have discussed it with you in the past. In February of this year, my employment with the American Society for Microbiology came to an abrupt end. It was not something I chose, nor was it anything I did wrong. It was simply that the organization needed to make some fundamental changes to how they operate, where they allocate their money, and what their mission is. Because associations these days are not doing well. They have to really refocus their energy because they want to stay relevant. But with changes in technology and behavior and attitudes, they really have to just transform themselves. So I wish them well in that. I was told the news gently, professionally. I was given a generous severance package and a one week in which to complete my work in progress and to transfer what I could to others. I had a week to also remove my personal belongings from my office, which I still had, turn in my computer and key card. Now, I'm told that most people in their professional lives have already been through an experience like this once or several times even. I had never been through it. I'd been a loyal employee of this association for 38 years. It was my entire professional career. I grew up there. I started out in 1985 as a copy editor trainee. I was promoted to copy editor and then production editor, then senior production editor and then copy editing manager. My last year was as a senior specialist in the communications department. Suffice it to say, this was hard news for me to receive. Of course, I could absorb it because I've grown up, I've become able to take such news. I did what was necessary to close up shop and turn out the lights. But this was still a sort of a crucifixion experience for me. And in the middle of it, I thought to myself, how would I resurrect myself from this? What would be my Easter? And then what would happen after that? Here is the crux, no pun intended, of my message. When we experience crucifixion, we have to create our own resurrection. You might remember Reverend Sandy talking about this last week. The next phase after resurrection is redirection. What is redirection? It means to change the course or direction of. Imagine a stream of water that encounters an obstacle, such as a wall or a rock. 
Does the water simply stop? No, not for long at least. Does it reverse course? Not usually. It goes a different way. It redirects. When we find ourselves turned around, bandied about, crushed and defeated, we too must choose a different way. We must arise. We must decide for ourselves what comes after our Easter. Let's think a little bit about the apostles of Christ after his death, resurrection, and return to heaven. After his humiliation and trial, death, and resurrection, you can imagine what the apostles must have been feeling. Bewildered, confused, depleted, and dispirited. The crucifixion of Jesus had been a crucifixion also for them. They were huddled in the upper room, trying to recover and trying to decide what was next for them. Imagine that state of mind. They needed some way to regain their footing. Now remember that near the end of his mission, Jesus had told them that he would send them a gift, something that would be necessary for them to go forward. The gift was delivered at a time that we call Pentecost. Pentecost is a word that comes from the Greek. It means 50th, five zero. It originally referred to the Jewish festival of Shavuot, also known as the festival of weeks. It falls on the 50th day after Passover. During Shavuot, God gave the Torah to Moses on Mount Sinai. Now the Christian festival of Pentecost aligns with that tradition but it occurs 50 days or seven Sundays after Jesus' resurrection. Pentecost symbolizes the empowerment of believers, the beginning of the church as we know it, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the faithful. This is what it says in Acts about that. And when the day of Pentecost was come, they were all together in one place. Suddenly there came from heaven a sound as of the rushing of a mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them tongues parting asunder, like fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there was dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, from every nation under heaven. And when this sound was heard, the multitude came together and were confounded because every man heard them speaking in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled saying, behold, are not all these speaking Galileans? And how do we hear every one of us in our own language, what they are saying? They were amazed and perplexed and said to one another, what does this mean? Now you can imagine this was not simply a post-service church hall coffee service by any means. Tongues of fire, a mighty wind blowing through the place, spontaneous speaking in all the languages of the region. This was a Super Bowl halftime of literally biblical proportions. Peter was on fire with energy, confident, a powerful orator. He preached to a large gathering immediately after this, and he managed to convince many people to believe. 3,000 people were baptized that day. Pentecost is regarded as the beginning of Christianity, really, as a movement with a purpose and a new community. That boost of spirit, with Peter as the first one to follow Jesus' lead as the leader, is regarded as the beginning of the modern church. That was a supreme act of redirection. After a traumatic event in our own lives, we need to regain our footing as well. I like that 
I remember in the Catholic tradition, after Easter and after Christmas were celebrated, there was something called ordinary time. It was printed in all the publications when you pick them up in the pew at a service. We are now in ordinary time, meaning essentially that we're not in a particular liturgical event like Christmas or Easter. I've always enjoyed being in ordinary time. So back to my story, what am I doing now to regain my equilibrium, to resurrect myself from this crucifixion experience? Well, I'm utilizing my support system, including many of you. I take advantage of meetings, lunches, and walks with you, my Unity friends. I just concluded a delightful yoga class, an introduction to yoga, which I'd never experienced. And it really helped me to calm myself. I might pursue that further. I feed birds in my yard. I do squirrel therapy in the local park, which means I go to the park and I feed the squirrels peanuts. <laughs> it is really therapeutic, I have to tell you. I'm volunteering at the U.S. Botanic Gardens. I'm talking with the financial planner, a career counselor, and my friends. I'm looking at new potential employment opportunities. I am constructing my own redirection. What does unity say about Pentecost? I consulted an expert, Reverend Sandy Butler, whom we all know. I also consulted truthunity.net, a wonderful resource of wisdom. Unity says, spirit always manifests itself according to the measure of our faith and trust. When our people or our thoughts are gathered in the upper chamber, which is a place of high spiritual understanding and are unified in thought and purpose, prayer, the way of the Lord is made straight. We receive the gift of gifts, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Reverend Sandy noted last week that we all experience a tomb of some sort in our own lives, a time of darkness. We often have discussed this and referred to it as hell in the hallway, which is the title of a book. It's an uncomfortable place where a door has closed behind us, but the way forward is not yet obvious. Reverend Sandy reminded us last week that we resurrect ourselves following Jesus's example. There is always a resurrection, she said. We have to acquire an Easter consciousness. We have to bring to the forefront of our consciousness the fact that we are all children of God, created in God's image, with the ability to choose and to direct our lives. One of Unity's basic principles, of course, is the fact that just knowing these things is not enough. We have to put it into practice. I heard you, Reverend Sandy, thank you for your advice and your reminders. So I'm working on my second act, my post Easter life. I'm doing what I can to keep myself healthy and motivated. It would be easy to sink into a morass of self pity. Do you remember our friend Vernell Nelson who speaks with us occasionally talking about a book that she wrote entitled don't ever invite me to another pity party. She published a book with that title, which you can find on Amazon. I remember that talk, Reverend Vernell. Thank you for that. It was good motivation for this situation that I'm in. Now I have good friends in San Francisco whom I have visited many times. So I'm familiar with some events there, including a person I've heard about named Kevin Briggs who's an example, I think, of redirection after crucifixion. Kevin Briggs was a California Highway Patrol officer in San Francisco. In 1994, he began patrolling the Golden Gate Bridge, the South End specifically, which has become over time a popular site where people end their lives in suicide. Kevin Briggs became a crucial figure in helping many of those tortured souls to find their own second acts. 
Over a period of 20 years, Kevin Briggs met hundreds of people in their darkest hours. They'd been chased to the edge of their life at one of the most popular suicide destinations, the Golden Gate Bridge. Kevin's activities are summarized in a 2015 book entitled Guardian of the Golden Gate, protecting the line between hope and despair. Kevin Briggs learned through his interactions with desperate people to listen to them, to really listen to the anguish in their hearts and the need to connect with another person. He learned to talk with them softly and slowly. He learned to ask their names, to ask whether they had children. He talked about hope. He expressed personal interest in their situation and he made no false promises. In his attempts to talk with them and connect over his time there, he apparently persuaded more than 200 people, 200 people not to jump from that bridge. In 2005, he met someone in that situation named Kevin Berthea, who was about to commit suicide. Briggs spoke with Berthea for 92 minutes that day. Those 92 minutes saved Berthea's life. And it led both of these men down a new path. Because today, the two of them speak nationally about suicide prevention. And who better to know than two people who've been intimate with the experience. In a 2014 TED Talk, which you can find online, Briggs shared stories about some of the people he encountered. He spoke with them and listened to their stories. With his compassion, gentle voice, eye contact, and an innate capacity for listening to understand. He encouraged many of those people in their darkest night to come back over the bridge's rail to solid ground and to start a new chapter in their lives, a redirection. He dedicated his life after retirement to promoting mental health awareness through an organization called Pivotal Points. That was Kevin Briggs' second act. It is crucial to build enthusiasm when you're pursuing your second act. The Sufi poet Rumi said this about it. Passion makes the old medicine new. Passion lops off the bow of weariness. Passion is the elixir that renews. How can there be weariness when passion is present? Oh, don't sigh heavily from fatigue. Seek passion, seek passion, seek passion. Julius Caesar, the play by William Shakespeare has an important line that helped me in my time. Men at some time are masters of their fates. The fault is not in our stars, but in ourselves that we are underlings. Shakespeare was saying something about personal responsibility. We have to take control of our lives and we have to resurrect ourselves. Now with Unity's guidance behind me and the energy of people like you, I'm going to keep walking forward on my path. I'm going to resurrect myself. I'm going to open a new door in this hallway. I'm going to find my second act and I'm going to thrive. I hope that my thoughts and observations today will have some meaning for you because you know we all have a dark time. Sometimes we have many of them. After your next crucifixion experience, I say, please resurrect yourself. Find the passion you need to go forward. I'll help you. We'll all help you. That's why we're here, to help each other. Create your own Pentecost and your own second act. Before I conclude, I just want to show you some graphics that I made up for this event. Something simple. They helped me to construct my talk. First of all, we all have a crucifixion experience. Crucifixion. Then we use our unity principles and our drive to have a resurrection. 
resurrection. Finally, if we're lucky and we really push hard, we have redirection. I wish you a happy redirection in your own life. Thank you for listening. Let us all prepare for meditation. Everyone, if you would, take a comfortable position, whatever is comfortable for you. Relax your body. Let the chair support you, but be fluid. Let your breath come deeper and more regular. As your breath becomes more deep and regular and you feel yourself relax, go within. Perhaps you are experiencing a difficulty now that you can focus upon, or perhaps there was one in the past. Don't dwell on the darkness, but think about that time. Think about that challenge. Let it weigh lightly, very lightly in your thoughts. Remember what it's like to be in the darkness and then what it's like to emerge, to find your footing, to receive help and encouragement and to step forward again into the light. Something as simple as reconnecting with a friend, taking a walk in the sunlight, reading something inspiring, listening to some beautiful music, creating art, hearing the laugh of a child, Dwell upon resurrection, the power to transcend difficulty, the gifts we have been given to move forward in life on our mission. Think about the wonderful people in your life, those who have departed, those you know now, and those yet to come into your life. And let us be grateful. Let us be grateful for the tools and the people in our lives. Let us be grateful for this beautiful spiritual community where we've come together and receive encouragement and truth lessons, where we are reminded of what we already know we are beautiful, eternal beings of light, living a human experience at the moment, but soon to rejoin that heavenly choir of eternity. This moment is all that matters. We are here now, together, in light and love. Feel that light and love where you are. Let your consciousness be filled with it. Let it be like the sun rising in the night, filling your entire world with light and beauty. For just a moment in the silence, be grateful and know that you are loved. In the spirit of transformation, resurrection, and redirection, go forward in this day, blessed, re-energized, and ready to continue your mission on earth. Amen.
I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. So John, in the midst of your crucifixion experience, in the midst of all the pain and suffering that we may have in our lives or what's going on in our country and globally, what can we do? What can we do as individual people? Um, this next song I'm going to sing for you uh, is based on that passage from Ephesians chapter three. And it speaks to how we are called to stand up with arms held wide wherever we are to love, to love those around us, to love people not to curl up and hide and be defensive to protect ourselves, but to step forward with God's power to love. The world is upside down. Wrong is right, day is night. Violence and lies, fear on every side. What should we do? What can we do? You say stand up at the ends of the earth. Stand up at the ends of the earth. Stand up at the ends of the earth. With arms held wide. Wider than the oceans. Of tears we've cried. Longer than the rivers of blood. Of justice is denied. Higher than the cloudy skies Pouring down their bitterness Deep into the earth Deeper than the earth Is our love I'm holding tight To the ones I love Keep danger at bay and hide myself away with violence and lies fear never leave my side what should i do what should i do help me stand up at the ends of the earth stand up at the ends of the earth stand up at the ends of the earth with arms held wide wider than the ocean of blood, of justice is denied, higher than the cloudy skies, pouring down their bitterness deep into the earth, deeper than the earth, is our love, is our goodness, what a fabulous service. Caroline, I hope it will not be another year before you're back with us again, because your music and its message are, are, were just, are just so inspiring. And John, oh my goodness, I, I can't even begin to tell you, I, we're in, in our household right now. We're going through a sort of a crucifixion, crucifixion resurrection, redirection experience. It, our whole household is going through that right now. Um, and um, working our way through it. And so your, your message was incredibly meaningful for me today. Um, so I, where, does that, where does that put us? That puts us with the closing prayer, um, also taken from uh, the universal Christ. What if Christ is the name for the transcendent within of everything in the universe? 
What if Christ is the name for the immense spaciousness of all true love? What if Christ refers to an infinite horizon that pulls us from within and pulls us forward too? What if Christ is another name for everything? It is fullness. And so it is. We are so blessed here at Unity Center DC for extraordinary speakers, talented musicians who share with us each week their God gift, their message, their inspiration. And for us as recipients, I'd like you to take this moment and be grateful. If you want to express your gratitude by giving a gift to Unity Center DC, it's possible we'll put up on the screen the options, but you can give online, you can mail a cash or a check to the address you'll see on the screen so that we can continue this ministry, which has blessed us all. Thank you.